Hi, my name is Marin and today FM rocks in Lambasa. Mula, my name is Mark. I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks in Makassi. Hey, Bula from Rocky Rocky. I'm Mentor. I love listening to Today FM because they're playing many hits. Today FM rocks. My name is Enrico. I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks in Suba. Hi, I'm Asunika and I'm from Lotoka and I love Today FM. Today FM rocks. Bula, I'm Siva. I'm from Bat. I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. Today's hit music on Today FM. In this bulletin, women not aware of services. Tuna shortage, a continuing concern. And Pinktober, a month for all, says Minister. From the studios of FBC Suba, Teva Lindua. The leader of the Rural Women Media Network in the Western Division, Fani Mwasewanga, says many women who are victims of domestic violence and abuse are unaware of the services they can access. Speaking during the national convening of rural women leaders, Mwasewanga says their work is centered around providing a safe space for women to share and discuss the impact of violence on their family. Bosiwanga says there's still a lot to be done to educate women in rural communities. Even if I try to, to ask them if they really understand violence, the kind of violence that they go through, first they share their story. And uh, when the group continues, they then they came to understand, even with the legal aid services that are available in this district, most of them are where the services is free. They see it there. They know the, the services that they can relate to the issues that they Fiji continues to look into other avenues to increase the tuna supply for processing at the Pacific Fishing Company Limited in Levuka, which works with Bumblebee Seafoods, to name one. Minister responsible Semi Koroi Lavisao says they continue to face a shortage of tuna, with around 120 metric tons needed daily to efficiently run operations. However, PAFCO is now only able to process around 70 metric tons per day, comprised of both albacore and skipjack tuna. Koroi Lavisao says they're hoping other Pacific Island countries will be able to assist them with increasing their catch as well as marketing Fiji as a hub processing center. We have involved uh, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, especially with the roving uh, ambassador in the Pacific in trying to get the uh, discussion uh, going with other countries uh, that uh, we had targeted to try and get more tuna for PEFCO. The percentage of older the older population in Fiji, defined as people aged 60 plus, has been increasing steadily since 2000. Permanent Secretary for Ministry of Women, Children and Poverty Alleviation, Jennifer Poole, says in the 2017 National Census, Fiji's older population comprised 9% of the total population. Celebrating International Day of Older Persons in Suva today, Poole says this is expected to reach nearly 20% of the population in 2050, bringing to reality the need to prepare ourselves for an aging population. It's also relevant to share here that the Ministry is working to review Fiji's ageing policy of 2011 to ensure that we assess and confirm the realities of ageing in our current Fiji and to prepare the nation well to improve services for the aged through greater collaboration amongst all stakeholders. Pink Toba is not only for cancer patients and those diagnosed with cancer, as it concerns people as a whole. Health Minister Dr. Ifereming Wangai Nambete says Pink Toba is for everyone, as we all are at the risk of getting cancer. And this month is dedicated to creating awareness and educating people. Dr. Wangai Nambete adds, most men believe that the gender is immune to breast cancer. However, this is not the case, as around five men are diagnosed with breast cancer annually. A person who is well needs to understand that they are at risk of getting cancer. And they must ensure that when they, when they have any sign or symptom, there is a worry that they present themselves to the health you know, facility for review and be seen. Preparations for the Fiji Excellence in Tourism Awards for next year is on track. 
speaking during an update on the event last night at Sofitel Resort. Chair Bill Whiting says the theme for the awards is celebrating tourism excellence in people and product. Whiting says tourism continues to play a vital role in the economy and will continue to do so and that achieving excellence in the industry further enhances the appeal of Fiji as a destination of choice over other countries. The awards will be held at the Sofitel Resort and Spa on the 14th of March next year. We need to encourage excellence in tourism. Uh, we are operating in a very competitive international environment. Uh, we are not the only destination uh, out there, but people have a choice. So we, we, we must have a good product. And so to have a good product is to recognise people, recognise the people who work in our industry. Speaking at their 11th year birthday celebration today of D Digicel Fiji Chief Executive Mike Gregg said they will continue to deliver for the people of Fiji. To celebrate their 11 years of existence in Fiji, Digicel Fiji is embarking on more investment in the telecommunication industry. For the staff that were there when it all started, the growth of the company is something to cherish. Digicel Fiji CEO Greg says the CEO, the company, pardon me, has come a long way in providing service to the nation. Well, it's important for us to continue to do is to build loyalty and to build a relationship with customers. At the end of the day, that's what we're here for. Coming up, Scotland zip Samoa at Rugby World Cup. And Bati named for Australian Encounter. Stay with us. Hoy tabua, aku dah tali tengen na barong na bola FM, nampun dua nasir. Bola, alang gonoa, lu toka, lu tali tengen na bola FM berarti nampun dua nasir. Ni bola mana ka? Nampak yang gosa, bola FM ngah. Eh nak kasi? Nampun gosa, mudo aci bo na bola FM, nampun dua nasir nusur. Ni bola mana ka? Nampun go Jerry, yang melampasa. Aku barong ngah na bola FM, nampun dua. Bola FM, nampun dua nasir. Flying Fijians hooker Sam Matavesi is aware of the massive strength in Georgia's forward pack. Matavesi, who is expected to be named as the starting hooker late this afternoon for the Flying Fijians, says they have to execute their set piece against a team like Georgia. I think it's going to be a hard game on th uh, Thursday, a really hard game. Yeah, they've got a massive pack and then... Also, like the, the, the set piece wise, line out and scrum, they're very good. So we have to be 100% on our game if, if we want to get a result. I think our first game against Australia was okay for the first 60 minutes, and then after that, it wasn't, wasn't as good. And I think last week wasn't good enough as, as a whole. Scotland finally got their World Cup campaign underway with a 34 0 bonus point win over a resilient Samoa in sweltering conditions. Scotland needed two second half penalty tries to claim the extra point. The Fiji National Rugby League's Prime Minister's 13 teams have been named. Josephine Majors and Luke Nandurutalo will lead the men's and women's teams, respectively. Coach Brandon Costin says they have selected the best possible squad. The number one strength that these players have is, is a real passion to want to represent Fiji. These young men you know, are local players. You know, they were born in Fiji, they went to school in Fiji. Their lifelong dream since they were very little boys has been to represent Fiji Bati. This is the very first opportunity for all these players to represent Fiji at such a high level. Every player is on debut. The Prime Minister's 13th tournament will be held in Suva next Friday at the ANZ Stadium. Fiji under-23 football coach Marik Rondu says any team that wants to play in the Olympics will have to go through New Zealand. Rondu says Fiji is privileged to have New Zealand as their semi-final opponents. Coach Rondu is optimistic about Fiji's progression to the 2019 OFC Olympic Qualifiers Final. It's going to be a challenge. Uh, it's going to be uh, a lot of hard work. 
but uh, Samoa and uh, Solomons have demonstrated that uh, goals can be scored against New Zealand. The Fiji under-23 team will face New Zealand in the semi-final of the 2019 OFC Olympic qualifying match tomorrow at midday. Cloudy periods with brief showers over the eastern parts and interior of larger islands. Fine apart from afternoon or evening showers elsewhere. And that is your FBC News Now. Remember to join us at 7 p.m. for our major bulletin. For these stories and others, you can also tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. Good afternoon. My name is Neha and I'm from Karavi. And Mirchi FM, it's hot. Hamachale Nasori se Mirchi FM bohut julu. Hi, I'm Shara Pakash Bhatkata. Tava me Mirchi FM Stepkinson and Mirchi FM, it's hot. Hi, my name is Prashant. I live in Suva. I love Mirchi FM because Mirchi FM, it's hot. Hi, I'm Sharon. I love uh, listening Mirchi FM because it's awesome and it's hot. Hi, I'm Rachel. And I'm Shavi. We, we love, love listening to Mirchi FM in Lambasa. Mirchi FM. It's hot.